Welcome back! In the last episode, Kevin from Green Mobility told us about immutable deployments. So do immutable deployments apply to other components of your system as well, besides Cloud Run, Kevin? Yeah, like we want to prevent drifts everywhere in our production environment. If, for example, you can get into trouble with your cron jobs. Uh, developers might add or modify your jobs in the cloud scheduler, and after a few weeks, you're not sure what jobs are there and what they're for. Ah, how do you prevent that drift for cloud scheduler jobs? Let me show you. We're using Terraform to deploy Cloud Scheduler jobs. That way, all job definitions are in a Terraform manifest file that's in source control. It's easy to see when a job was added and why. Uh, whenever we apply the Terraform manifest, Terraform compares the list of scheduled jobs in the manifest with the jobs in production. It then adds or deletes the jobs in production as needed to make sure the production contains only the jobs listed in the manifest. Nice. Uh, that ensures that the production environment stays consistent. Uh, what else are you doing to keep production under control? We're also focusing on security. Uh, we needed to provide transparency and be strict about who can see what. For example, access groups, we have a BI and data. They can run reports. We have a DevOps group. They can deploy code and view production. And then we have a dev group. They can view production, but they can check in code. Ah, but Kevin, if developers don't have access to the production environment, how do they know what settings and code would work there? Uh, we have many dev projects. Uh, developers are free to experiment with settings and test their code in those projects. And every now and then, we de destroy the dev projects and create new ones using the settings in our production project. Ah, as you went full serverless, is there anything that worked differently than you expected? Ah, yeah. the, the cloud scheduler, for example, wouldn't start new jobs if all ones are running. Uh, so our solution to get around that was just using two cloud scheduler jobs. It's actually kind of cool because it means that the scheduler keeps track of what is running, which can prevent some really bad bugs. Uh, for example, if two instances of the same jobs are trying to modify the database at the same time, for example, you could get into really serious trouble. Mm, that makes sense. Also, we find that many of our jobs run at a five minutes past the hour, every hour, uh, and that puts a lot of load on our Cloud SQL database. We could manually schedule the job start times over the hour, but we have a lot of scheduled jobs and we keep adding more. Uh, it would be nice if Cloud Scheduler could just run our jobs randomly for us. I will let the product manager for Cloud Scheduler know. Is there anything else you've done to be more productive with Google Cloud? Uh, some tasks are performed often, uh, like switching between projects and users requires a lot of clicking and waiting in the Cloud Console. I wrote two command line tools, uh, GPC Run and GPC Off User, to quickly navigate between projects and users. They were easy to write, as you can do so much with the dcloud command, uh, commands from a shell script. Feel free to use it. Nice. I will check them out, and uh, we'll put the link in the description below. Any other learnings, Kevin? Uh, we also need to sync tens of thousands of records between our system and an external system. Uh, and this happens a few times per hour. Uh, at first, we had a system dedicated to running this, which was slow and complicated. So what we did was we split this big job into 500 small jobs using Cloud Task, which meant we could run them in, in asynchronous lists in parallel. Uh, we found that Cloud Task made it easy to kick off these 500 jobs quickly. And also, the code that ran each of these 500 small jobs became simpler. 500 jobs? Doesn't that make it harder to handle errors? It actually makes it easier. Like Each job is shorter, so a few things can go wrong. And if any of the 500 jobs fails, Cloud Tasks tries it again. Uh, we don't have to write any of the retry logic ourselves. Oh, nice. So, Kevin, what's the verdict? Does serverless get a thumbs up or a thumbs down from you? A big thumbs up. I could have built the data ingestion, backends, uh, scheduled jobs, and so on using virtual machines. But our team has saved so much time by doing it serverlessly with Firestore, Cloud Run, a BigQuery, Cloud Task, and also Cloud Scheduler. In the meantime, we have been able to add more functionality to our cloud car sharing platform quicker. Good to hear, Kevin. Uh, thanks for sharing your serverless experiences. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Kevin or me, please add them in the comments. Also, this episode was a little different from the others in the Serverless Expedition series. Please let us know if you found it useful, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time!